What's up guys, Alec here, and this video is the ultimate guide to SRT files. You're going to be learning how to create an SRT file manually from scratch, or how to create them faster with tools, learn about the time code, what they're for, and exactly how you can use them, check them, and upload them to social media. So we see subtitles every day, whether it's on TV, Netflix, if we're browsing social media videos, such as YouTube and Instagram, but how do you actually create these subtitles to put on your own content? So a file that contains subtitles is called an SRT file, which stands for Subrip Subtitle. It's a plain text file that contains information about the duration and location of text that is displayed on screen. One of the most popular places you'll find SRT files online is on YouTube. Every time you click that CC button, Button, which stands for closed captions, you're activating the SRT files linked to that video. Now, SRT files work with most social media platforms. And the great thing is, is that most social media platforms accept SRT files. This means that you can create one SRT file and distribute it to all your separate social media channels. This avoids you having to use the native subtitle tool for each platform. So there's a variety of different ways that how you can actually make SRT files. And I'm gonna show you a couple. First of all, I'm gonna show you how to make one from scratch. And then I'm gonna show you how to make one using a tool called Veed. So now you know what an SRT file is for, how do you make one? First of all, you don't need to download a piece of software for this. Creating a subrip subtitle file from scratch is actually very easy to do. All you need to do is have a text editor on your computer and create a text file. And in that text file, you can start writing out the subtitles you want to appear on the screen. The only thing you need to keep in mind when creating your SRT file is that it respects the following format. So here's a quick example of an SRT file that I would have for a nine second video. So first of all, one subtitle is composed of three things. The number of that subtitle, the time code for that subtitle, and then the actual text which is displayed on screen. So as you can see here, for the first subtitle displayed on screen, it's section number one. Then we have the beginning and ending time code for when that subtitle is displayed on screen. The time code is composed of nine digits, the first two being the hour, the second two being the minutes, the third two being the seconds, and then the last three being the milliseconds. So as you can see here, this subtitle would start 200 milliseconds after the video starts, and it would end at 2 seconds and 600 milliseconds after the video has started. And then during that time code, the text that is displayed on screen is the following. So this is a video example, and here I just want to show you. During these 2.4 seconds, this is the text that would be displayed on screen. And once that subtitle is over, the next subtitle comes in. So as we can see, we're now on the second section. The time code goes from 2.6 seconds to 5.8 seconds and the following text is displayed. So that is what an SRT file would look like and that is how you can write one from scratch. If you're creating it in your text editor on your computer, the only thing you have to do once you've saved it is just change the extension from .txt to .srt at the end. The most important part to this is just making sure that the timestamps for each subtitle are formatted correctly, just like this hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. I also want to mention that there can be a blank period between subtitles. If we take a look back at my graphic and we have a look at the first subtitle, we can see that the first subtitle ends at two seconds and 600 milliseconds. This doesn't mean that the second subtitle has to start at that same time. We could have a three second gap between the first subtitle and the second subtitle, meaning there can be blank periods. So just keep in mind, every subtitle needs a section number, it needs a beginning and ending time code for that section. It needs to be formatted correctly. And then it needs the text, which is displayed for that subtitle. And once you've done that, just change the file from .txt to .srt on your computer. It's as easy as that. So now you know how to create an SRT file from scratch on your computer, but you may be thinking this is a very lengthy process if I have to do all of this manually. This is why there are tools that have been created and I'm gonna show you how to create SRT files at a much faster rate using Veed.io. Thanks to Veed.io, you can actually automatically transcribe all the audio from your video into subrip subtitle files. Once you have your video in its final form that you need subtitles for, and the reason I'm saying in its final form is because once you create the SRT file, you don't want to be making any changes, otherwise the time codes aren't going to line up. Once you've got that video in its final form, you want to upload it to veed.io. When you're in the project editor, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to click on subtitle in the left sidebar and then click on auto subtitles. This will then automatically transcribe all the audio from your video into text and put it at the correct time slots of that video. So basically it automatically creates the section number for each subtitle, its beginning and end time codes, and then displays the actual text during that section. So once you've clicked on auto subtitles, it might take a few seconds to load, but I highly recommend just going through the whole thing and checking all the spelling, especially if you're adding names or words that you've made up for some reason, 
you'll definitely want to be correcting those because Avid is only going to recognize the English language. Sometimes also if you have a very strong accent or you're talking really fast like I do sometimes, you might have to correct your words. Maybe a little bit of grammar too, but that's entirely up to you. And then once you're happy with the subtitles you have generated thanks to Veed, you can download them as an SRT file. To do this while still being in the subtitle tab in Veed's project editor, all you have to do is click on options at the top right of the subtitle editor. And here you have the choice to either download your subtitles as a .SRT file or if you want as a .txt file. This is if you want to make further changes to that file. And that's it, you've created an SRT file automatically thanks to Veed without taking hours manually writing everything out. So now you've downloaded your SRT files and they are on your computer, how do you actually use them? So first of all, before uploading them to your social media or you're sending the SRT files off to a client, you might want to check that they work. To do this, you can easily use a software that pretty much everyone has on their desktop called VLC Media Player. If you don't have it, you can download it, it's free. You want to select a video on your computer and if your default media player isn't VLC, right click on it to open with and open with VLC. Once your video is in VLC Media Player, on the top menu bar, click on subtitles and then add subtitle file. Finder is then going to open up and basically you're just going to have to choose the dedicated SRT file for that video. To keep myself organized, I like to create folders with the video and the subtitle file inside and I call the subtitle file the same thing as the video file, but just with subtitles written on the end. Once you've opened up your SRT files inside a VLC media player, it should now be playing along with your video. Here, you might just wanna watch the whole video through just to double check or even triple check that your SRT files is correctly displaying the subtitles at the correct timestamps. And then once you've checked your subtitles, you can post them to social media. Many social media sites such as YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter all allow their creators to input closed captions. And because a lot of social media platforms actually have their video content on autoplay when you're scrolling through the feed, a lot of users actually watch the videos with the sound off. So when subtitles are on for that video, people are a lot more likely to stick around and actually watch it even though the sound is off on their phone. And SRT files are also great for SEO. When you upload SRT files to platforms such as Facebook or YouTube, they're indexed by Google, therefore showing up a lot more in searches. Also, I have found from personal experience that SRT files are amazing when it comes to YouTube content due to the fact that Google owns YouTube and Google will detect the long tail keywords in your SRT files and help you rank on YouTube and even Google's first page. When it comes to adding SRT files to Facebook, there's two different ways you can do it. If you're adding it to a Facebook page, you'll have the option to add your SRT files during the process of uploading that video. However, when it comes to uploading from your personal page, such as your personal Facebook account, you need to upload that video first, then click on edit, and then you can add subtitles to that video. On Facebook, a great feature is you can add as many SRT files as you want in different languages so people can choose different languages for your video. That way you can easily translate them. I also do want to mention that with Veed, you can automatically translate your subtitles and again download them as an SRT file. One thing you need to make sure when uploading your SRT files to Facebook is that they have to be named properly. They Facebook only accept SRT files in a correct format. This is just how Facebook do things. Facebook like to be different. If you don't, you're gonna get this error message. And as you can see, the format has to be the name of your file and then dot en underscore us dot SRT. And that's of course, if you're uploading subtitles in the English language USA. If you're uploading subtitles in French from France, your subtitle file would look like this. Subtitle file name dot fr underscore fr dot SRT. So when it comes to putting subtitles on Facebook, it's very likely you'll have to rename most of your SRT files. So keep this in mind, even if you're uploading to LinkedIn, just format them the Facebook way because other platforms can accept any format of SRT file. Now, when it comes to adding SRT files to LinkedIn, it is very simple. Once you've selected the video you want to upload, before clicking next, click on edit. Here, you'll be able to select the SRT file you want and save it to that video post. However, unlike on Facebook, LinkedIn, you can only upload one SRT file. Next up, YouTube. YouTube is the platform where SRT files have the most power because like I said, Google will recognize long tail keywords and regular keywords in your SRT files and help you rank big time. And to upload these files on YouTube, it is pretty straightforward. Once you've uploaded a video, you just have to go into your creator studio. Then click subtitles in the left sidebar and choose a video that you want to add closed captions to. From there, you then click on the blue add languages button, click on add, and then click on upload a file, select the SRT file you want and save it. And then finally, Twitter. Twitter, you can add SRT files to, but you need access to Twitter Media Studios. And access to Twitter Media Studios is on an invite basis only. So unless you've been invited to access Twitter Media Studio, I would just suggest baked in subtitles to your video which you can also do with the feed.io. And that is how you can create SRT files from scratch or using tools 
you choose how you want to do it. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them down in the comment section below. If this video was helpful and you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, it really helps out the channel. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. That being said, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.